Hello and welcome back to Obsessive Prepper AZ. Today I am going to show you an easy 75 second that's right, 75 second bread for keto. Now this is not my recipe. I found this recipe from a couple that is on the internet, on YouTube, that is called Keto Connect. And I wanna give credit where credit's due. They came up with this recipe for a microwavable keto bread. And when you're on keto, or let's say like my husband who is diabetic and he doesn't want to eat gluten, this recipe saved and changed everything that we thought of of how to eat and so i wanted to share it with you and so i'm going to give you the basic ingredients and then i'm going to show you what i've done with their recipe and adapted so many different things from waffles to muffins to chocolate cake and it won't all be in this video so keep an eye out for those videos but i will give you the start and the basis of this and i hope you enjoy this because when you're like where you can't eat gluten or you're trying to be keto and trying to stay away from wheat products there's so much out there and i've made so many countless breads dense breads that are just like bricks and so this recipe kind of saved the day for me for an instant meal so this recipe makes it so easy to make a bread in the morning time to toast different things and it opens up the possibilities for you so come along again this is keto connects 75 second bread recipe okay so on their recipe they make a large batch and then what you do is you dip a quarter cup in to make your smaller batches of bread now because i've made their bread and i'm telling you it is super yummy i'm even doubling and making a bigger batch of it so normally what they would start off with is two cups of almond flour now i've got four cups of almond flour in here now i purchased my almond flour at kirkland costco and it's just cheaper and i do like their almond flour so if you have a costco go by and pick their almond flour up so with our four cups of almond flour i've got psyllium husk here so if you're going to do the two cup recipe you would use a quarter psyllium husk a quarter cup in this recipe because i'm doubling it i am doing a half a cup so with the psyllium husk i purchased the now brown because they suggested that they said if you use other psyllium husk it can turn your dough purplish so purchase the now brand now when i went to trader joe's all they had was the whole psyllium husk so i just put mine in a mortar and pestle and uh, grind it a little bit I haven't done it to a complete powder and I like the recipe just as much so just a little bit of grind on it the next thing is ground flax meal so you can grind it in a mortar pestle if you have just the whole seeds or you can purchase the meal instead of the whole flax seed and in the recipe they tell you to do six tablespoons for that two cups because I've doubled it I'm going to do three quarters of a cup that's what 12 tablespoons would break into and you don't have to like be totally accurate with this and the next thing is baking powder two tablespoons of baking powder if you do that two cup i'll leave those recipes listed below i am going to do four tablespoons of the baking powder because i doubled their recipe they also have you put in pink Himalayan salt, a half a teaspoon. So I'm not even going to measure this. I'm going to put in a teaspoon of it or thereabouts. All right. And that's our recipe. That is the basis of the entire bread recipe. And I'm just going to mix it completely up. This recipe is so easy and to put it in a container that you can with a quarter cup in it then all you got to do is go get your quarter cup of mix to make your bread so this recipe is so simple and easy to do once you've made your base it's easy we put a tablespoon of butter in a pyrex dish here and we've melted it in the microwave for 30 seconds we're going to go ahead now and take a quarter cup of our base and put it in and all i do is mix the butter into it and the butter will pretty much consume all that almond flour mixture 
And at that point, all we're going to do is add one egg to our mixture. Now, when you do this, make sure that you mix this mixture really good because otherwise you'll see parts of egg white in it. So all you're going to do is mix this completely up. Now that I have it good and mixed, we're going to pop it in the microwave for 75 seconds. All right, we're almost done here. All right, a little warm. I'm going to get it over to you and show you what it turned out like. So for 75 seconds, you can see that it rose and how it pulls away from our Pyrex dish. And all I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to turn it out onto a plate. Well, here we go. The basic bread recipe turns out perfect and I'll show you what we can do with it. So what we can do with it is we can literally just take a serrated knife, cut it in half, and now as it cools, we can make a sandwich out of it. You could also do it in a square dish, but not just a sandwich. I'll show you something else we can do. Okay, I melted some more butter in another Pyrex dish, and I'm going to go ahead and get another quarter cup of our mix, mix it in here, and repeat the process. This time, the only thing I'm going to do different is I'm going to make it for a toast. And, but this time, what I'm going to add is everything but the bagel seasoning. Now, I get this at Trader Joe's. You can purchase it at other stores. I, I use the Trader Joe's brand. You know, a couple shakes of it. And then I add a little bit of extra garlic into it, granulated garlic. And we're going to make this a toast. Mix in my one egg. Again, we want to make sure that it's good and blended in here. I can't emphasize that enough. You, otherwise, you're going to have this eggy consistency. So it's worth your time to blend this, mix it up. Sorry about the noise in the uh, video. All right. We're going to pop this into the microwave for 75 seconds. Okay, so our everything but bagel mix is done. Woo! Make sure I don't burn my hand here. And I'm going to go ahead and pull it away from the sides, take it, and then turn it upside down on the plate. So we have our bagel with the everything but the bagel seasoning. And what I'm going to do here is, again, I'm going to cut this and I'm going to throw it in the toaster and I'll show you how it turns out. Generally with the toast, I will double toast it. It will take a couple times for me to get it to the right brownness that I want. So instead of putting it on and just letting it cook, toast it and then push it back down for a little bit extra of time. So while that's toasting, we're going to go ahead and start on the next one. I have this dish also that I melted two tablespoons of butter in, and I'm going to do a double batch in this one. Now, you can make this up and freeze it if you want. So all you have to do is pull the slice out and toast it. I've done that. And the reason why I wanted to show you this is this will make a nice sandwich bread with the square dish. So we went ahead and we put in our half a cup of our mix and I'm going to mix in two eggs. Our toast just getting ready to pop up. I'll show you that real quick. All right, so this is what I mean by a little bit of toast. So I'm going to go ahead and just put it in for another probably 30 seconds or so. Get this mixed up. 
Okay, by doing a double batch in my square dish, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the microwave for 90 seconds. So here we go with our toasted keto bread. Super yummy with the everything but bagel seasoning in. So I put a little butter on this, and then I've got a little bit of cream cheese here. Smear some cream cheese onto it. All right, there you go. This changed the whole ball game. So I cooked it for 90 seconds and then I went ahead and put it back in the microwave for another 25 seconds. And we're going to go ahead and get that out of this dish. You could let it cool down a little bit. It's hot. <laughs> so we have our square loaf of bread and we just go in with our serrated knife and we can cut slices off of it. And we can make sandwiches from this. You could probably even, you, you can get three slices off of this. You could probably even quadruple the batch to make a bigger loaf of bread. Once you get going with this, your options are just crazy what you can start thinking of. I was going to only do this video and show you these three basics, but I'm going to show you two more things you can make with this basic recipe. So I melted another tablespoon of butter. I'm going to go ahead and mix this like I originally showed you how to do. So we're going to mix our recipe. So we're mixing our almond flour. And they're going to mix in one more egg. Mix it really good. You can see when you've got it good and mixed because it starts to turn this light white yellow color. Now the only thing I'm going to do different to this recipe is I'm going to get my homemade vanilla and I'm going to add a little bit to it. I'm going to say probably a half a teaspoon of homemade vanilla. And then I also have some white swerve. Now you could use sugar if that's what you want, stevia, and I'm going to put in probably a half a teaspoon of swerve. Now the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a muffin and a waffle out of it. So I've got my waffle iron here hot in my one little Pyrex dish. I'm going to spray it with some coconut oil. I'm going to mix in half of the recipe into this. And I'm going to pour the other half into my waffle maker. All I'm going to do is I'm going to add some blueberries into my waffle mix. Close that down and I'm going to add some blueberries to my Pyrex dish mix. All right, this I'm going to pop in my microwave for if it was 75 seconds, I'm going to call it, let's try 45 seconds and see how it turns out and we're going to go ahead and cook our waffle. All right, 45 seconds is up. Yeah, I'm going to say 45 seconds is perfect for a little Pyrex like this. So now we have a little blueberry muffin. Let that cool off. Now this little waffle maker, you can get in Amazon. I'll leave the links down below in the description box. Makes it super easy to make little waffles. Now this one little recipe could make two waffles for you. Because I split it up, I have a blueberry muffin and now I have a blueberry waffle. And I'm telling you, the taste is amazing. 
So again, if you wanted to add some butter, I don't think I need to because I already had butter in my mix. We can take a little bit of sugar-free pancake syrup, pour over the top. So we have our blueberry waffle with just adding a little bit of vanilla and some swerve to it. This here alone has changed the ball game on what you can think about for different meals without gluten. We have our little blueberry muffin here. I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half and show you. You can add a little butter to it if you want. This is so good. We have our everything bagel, English muffin, you name it, with some cream cheese on it. Mm. and we have our basic sandwich breads you can make a hamburger out of this one put some avocado mayo on it some sandwich meat some cheese and you have a nice sandwich this would be so good with some sliced tomatoes some mozzarella cheese some basil olive oil and some balsamic vinegar would make an excellent excellent dill you could also do this where you toasted it and do the same thing you do a caprese and we have our regular loaf of bread that you can make and make a sandwich out of this basic recipe from keto connect like I showed you, make a double batch of it because you will use the heck out of it. It brings you so many different options of what you can do for meals. I hope you enjoyed this video. We have so many different choices now just off this basic recipe. Changes the whole ball game. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe. If you want to be notified for future videos, ring the bell. Again, thank you Keto Connect for this recipe because you made it the whole world change for gluten-free. Have a blessed day.